In an earlier lesson, we solved absolute value equations, we solved absolute value inequalities, and today we're going to graph them as functions on the coordinate grid. An absolute value function is simply a function that contains an absolute value expression. The parent absolute value function is f of x equals absolute value of x. That is a graph that is what we call v-shaped. All absolute value functions are v-shaped. You can see over in the picture, it makes the shape of a v. And it's symmetric around the origin. The vertex is the point where it shifts directions. And that's labeled in the picture. That's where the graph turns. That's where like each of the little segments come out of. Um, and the vertex of the parent function is 0, 0. The domain of the graph is all real numbers. Uh, that is really just another way of saying all the numbers on the number line. When you get to high school, you're going to look at what all real numbers means, but we're just going to use that language so you're comfortable with it when you get to high school. There's actually a fancy symbol for it. It's kind of like the letter R, but instead of one vertical line, it has two vertical lines. So it kind of looks like that. Think of it as a capital letter R. And the range is y is greater than or equal to 0. Now, the way that we do the range is we look for the vertex, and we say, where are the y values of this graph? So the y values of this parent function are above 0, which is why our range is y is greater than or equal to 0, because there's no y values down here in the negative y section. Every other graph is some sort of transformation of this parent function, um, and let's look at what we're going to do to these absolute value equations. In example one, the first thing that we have to do is we have to graph uh, the function, we have to compare it to that parent function up above, and we have to, to describe the domain and range. So the first thing that we're going to do anytime you make a graph that you don't know what it looks like is you make a table, an xy table. Now, for the purposes of simplicity, I'm going to center it at 0. And the way that you center your table at 0 for the vertex is you put the vertex in the middle. So I'm going to leave some space for numbers above and leave some space for numbers below. So I'm going to do negative 1, negative 2, and then I'll do 1, 2, because I'm going to put 0, my vertex, in the middle. So let's plug in our numbers. So negative 2. When you plug in negative 2, you would get absolute value of negative 2, which is 2, plus 3 is 5. When you plug in negative 1, you get the absolute value of negative 1, which is 1, plus 3 is 4. When you plug in 0, you get the absolute value of 0, plus 3, which is 3. When you plug in 1, you get the absolute value of 1, which is 1, plus 3 is 4. And when you plug in 2, you get the absolute value of 2, which is 2, plus 3 is 5. So you see the symmetry is right here in the table. We have this symmetry happening, and that's what makes it V-shaped, the symmetry. And the vertex is right in the middle of the symmetry. So I know that my graph is ready to be made because I see symmetry in the table, and I've identified the vertex. So let's make our XY graph and plot our points. Negative 2, 5, negative 1, 4, 0, 3, negative 1, 4, and 2, 5. Make the V. I'll just label this G of X. And now what we have to do is we have to compare it to the parent function. So let's look up above at what the parent function looks like to refresh our memories. So if you notice, this one has its vertex at 0, 0, and it kind of looks like the same V that mine does, only mine has its vertex up here at 3, 0, 3. So what I want you to write down, because this is kind of important, is that when there's a number outside the absolute value, like this, like being added or subtracted, then it shifts it vertically. If it's plus, it shifts it up. If it's minus, it would have shifted it down. 
So let's write down what we just discovered. G of X got shifted three up. Now what we have to do is look at the domain and range. So for the domain, it's going to be all real numbers. So I'm just going to do my abbreviation to represent all real numbers rather than writing out the phrase. You can write out the phrase if you want. And what that means is that if you look at the graph, there's no spot where like you can't plug in an x value. So for example, if I had an x value all the way up here, over here on the negative x axis, there would be a dot somewhere up top. And if I had a point all the way far out here, there would be a dot somewhere up top, meaning that there's no x value that wouldn't be on the graph somewhere. But for the range, it's different. There are no y values underneath this vertex. So the range has to be greater than or equal to 3 because there's no y values underneath 3. So we write y is greater than or equal to 3. All right, let's look at letter B. Let's make our xy chart and let's plug in some values. Let's put 0 in the middle again, negative 1, negative 2, 1, 2, and see what happens. So I plug in negative 2, I get negative 2 minus 2, which is negative 4, and the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. Now I plug in negative 1. The absolute value, I'm sorry, no, nope, negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3, the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. Plug in 0, I get 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. The absolute value of that is 2. And when I plug in 1, I would get 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. The absolute value of that is just 1. And 2 minus 2 would be 0, so that gives me 0. But then you don't see symmetry in the table. So let's just keep going, see what happens. I'm just going to extend my table down a little more and keep going. Let's do 3, 4. So when I plug in 3, I get 3 minus 2, which is 1. The absolute value of 1 is 1. And when I plug in 4, I get 4 minus 2, which is 2. Absolute value of that is 2. And now you see the symmetry. Right? You see it right here. And that means that 2, 0 is the vertex. So, so just play along. Let's graph. So I'll make my x, y grid. And plot my points. Now I'm going to plot my vertex, and then I'm going to plot it centered around the vertex. You don't need to plot all the points on there, but you do have to show the v. So I'll plot 2, 0. And then I'll plot two points to the left and two points to the right. The best absolute value graphs will have around five points, at least five points, because then you get a nice V-looking thing. And then this was um, M of X. So now let's look at how it compares to the parent function. And if you compare this to the parent function y equals absolute value of x, it shifted 2 to the right. Um, it didn't shift up or down at all, but it shifted 2 places to the right. So let's write that down. That sounds important. Let's write m of x got shifted to right. So if it's minus inside the absolute value, it shifts it right. If it's plus, it shifts it left. And that might be a little counterintuitive. We're going to talk about that when we get in together in class. And then the final thing that we have to do is say what the domain and range are. So the domain for this, again, is all real numbers because there's no number that I can't plug in into the graph. And then range... Uh, makes me look for the y value. So the vertex 
is right here. So all of the y values are greater than this dot, which is at 0. Its y value is 0. So the range is y is greater than or equal to 0 because there's no y values underneath 0. Let's look at one more way that you can shift a graph. All right, we've got one more scenario. Now we have a coefficient, right? We've got a number in front of the absolute value. So let's see what happens in that case. And again, we're going to make a chart. We're going to make a table. And I'm going to have 0 in the middle of my table. And I know that it's going to be 0 because there's nothing being added and there's nothing inside the absolute value. So like we just learned in example 1, it's not going to be really shifted up or down at all. It's not going to be moved to the left or right, but something's going to happen. Let's see what it is. I'm going to go negative 1, negative 2, and 1, 2. So let's talk this through. I plug in negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. If I plug in 0, I would get 2 times 0. If I would plug in 1, I would get 2 times 1. And plug in 2, I would get 2 times 2, which is 4. And I know that I have a, a table ready to be graphed because I can see the symmetry that's happening in the chart, which means that 0, 0 is my vertex. So let's make our xy grid. So let's plot our points, 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, 4, and then on the flip side, negative 1, 2, and negative 2, 4. So you can see that the graph got skinnier. If you want to use some language from earlier in this chapter, you might say that the slope of the portions got steeper. Um, but you don't have to get that fancy. You can just say it got narrower. So let's just write that. Uh, that was Q. So Q of X got narrower. When there's a coefficient that is greater than 1 right here, the graph will get skinnier or narrower. Uh, finally, let's do the domain and range. So the domain is all real numbers. And the range, let's look for that vertex point because that's where uh, the cutoff is going to be. So the vertex is right here at 0, 0. So the range, meaning the possible y values, would be all the numbers that are up here above 0. So the range is y is greater than or equal to 0. We have one more in this section. Uh, let's Again, let's make our table x, y. And same thing, you can see that there's nothing being added or subtracted, either inside or outside. So the vertex is going to stay at 0. I'm going to go negative 1, negative 2, and then 1, 2. All right, now let's plug it in. Negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Negative 1 half times 2 is negative 1. Let's plug in negative 1. Negative 1, absolute value of that is 1. Negative 1 half times 1 is negative 1 half. So that's kind of be kind of annoying to graph, but let's just do it. 0, absolute value of 0 is 0. Anything times 0 is just 0. Absolute value of 1 is negative 1. Sorry, absolute value of 1 is 1. Negative 1 half times 1 is negative 1 half. And then the same thing will happen with 2. Absolute value of 2 is 2. Negative 1 half times 2 is negative 1. I see my symmetry, and I see the vertex, so I know that my table is ready to be graphed. So we just kind of estimate where the half points are.
and then what you will see is that the graph compared to that parent function the graph got wider and it also flipped down so two things happened that I need you to write down when there's a number that's less than one meaning like a fraction it's gonna get wider and when it's negative it's gonna flip down so let's write that P of X got wider and flipped down and the last thing that we have to do is talk about the domain and range whoa that's crazy so for the domain I'm running out of space here for the domain we still have all real numbers and for the range it's actually going to be y is less than or equal to zero because if you look at where all the y values are they're below zero so there's a lot more to this worksheet there's a lot more to this lesson but this is the overall understanding of the lesson and the rest of the things we're going to do uh, and talk about when I see you in class so I'm sure you have questions so just hold on to them and we'll talk when we see each other soon